Selfish Gene Theory by Richard Dawkins. So what does the term selfish gene even mean? I can tell you that it does not mean that any organism who carries the gene is the immediate bad guy in the group. An example of a selfish act is a beetle hoarding all the food for itself and leaving none for its beetle neighbor. Starving beetle dies and selfish beetle lives on to reproduce and its genes survive forever. Except there is more to the theory since altruism does exist. Symbiotic relationships between larger fish and cleaner fish seem altruistic. The larger fish gets cleaned and the cleaner fish does not get eaten. Except the only reason they work together is for the sake of themselves. The larger fish would eat the cleaner fish, but then all the other cleaner fish would refuse to help the larger fish. The cleaner fish can refuse to help larger fish, but then they would have nothing to eat. So does true altruism, where one organism helps another at a cost to itself. As Dawkins has said in his book, the animals will be treated as machines with a goal to survive. So imagine all animals as robots with a goal to survive and reproduce. Survival machines. To remind everyone of this notion, every animal will look like this. The selfish gene theory discusses altruistic behaviors and selfish behaviors and even connects them. Two completely opposite things working together? Yeah, look at this example. Dawkins believes that the selfish gene will look out for itself and its copies. An adult lion would not kill its own child with 50% of its genes because the selfish gene codes the robot to replicate. This is proven by the fact that the same adult lion would kill another lion's offspring since that offspring is 0% related. The lack of cannibalism in lions is also altruistic but it comes from what the selfish gene wants. The cannibalistic lions would kill and eat all the competition and get all the mates. Except this also means that all their children would inherit that gene and eventually kill each other. All that would be left are the non-cannibalistic lions that are altruistic to each other. This is also called an evolutionary stable strategy. In other words, by the selfish gene looking out for itself and its copies, animals have altruistic behaviors. Dawkins did assess the matter of how humans are affected by this theory. Oh, how? Memes. No, please don't go. In humans, there are two forms of altruism, biological evolution and cultural evolution. As humans, cultural evolution is much faster than biological. Social media and memes are our lives now, let's be honest. Okay, not actual memes. Dawkins actually uses the term meme from my meme to capture a unit of cultural evolution. Our altruism might not come from genes, but culture. Humans are more complex though, since our behavior is affected by other factors like ideas or beliefs. Dawkins' point is altruism doesn't just happen in nature. Altruism will only occur if it benefits the organism. If it helps the gene replicate, be altruistic. If the selfish ones all died off, altruistic behaviors are left. If it benefits the robot in any way, then do not attack. And that's the end. Thanks for watching.